Hi everyone, this is Dr. Anita Shrivastava and today I am going to talk about the microbial nutrition. So basically uh, the topics which we are going to cover in this lecture are the nutritional requirements, nutritional type of microorganisms, nutrients uptake, culture media as well as the cultivation of microorganisms also. So, first of all, we should understand what is nutrition. How we can define this term nutrition. So, in order to get the nutrition, we, get, we need some nutrients. So, if we define the nutrients, they are the substances used in biosynthesis and energy release and therefore they are required for the microbial growth because here we are talking about the microbial nutrition. So basically we are going to talk about the nutritional requirements, how this nutrients are acquired by the microorganisms different types of culture media and how does the cultivation of microorganisms takes place. So the utilization of the nutrients by the organisms for growth and normal functioning is nutrition. When we talk about the normal functioning, it involves cellular activities and physiological processes. So, there are so many essential nutrients that are required in order to obtain the nutrition. And those essential nutrients, they are classified into two types. Basically, if we see the microbial composition, then it shows that 95% of the cell dry weight is made up of few major elements. So, when we talk about the few major elements, that means we are talking about these macronutrients and in and some micronutrients so these major nutrients they actually are carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen sulfur Phosphorus, Potassium, Calcium, Magnesium and Iron. And these macronutrients, they are actually required in large quantities for the growth. Now the role of Carbon. As I was talking about, I was naming some macronutrients. So basically, carbon is also among one of the major uh, macronutrients. The role of the carbon is that they are basically the components for carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and nucleic acids. They also participate in cell structure and metabolism. Oxygen and hydrogen is also an important element and they also participate along with the carbon in the formation of certain organic molecules. Potassium is required for different activities by a number of enzymes. Calcium 
provides the heat resistance to bacterial endospores iron is a part of the cytochrome and a cofactor for enzymes and electron carrier proteins so basically this slide actually represents the major macronutrients and micronutrients and i am telling just the functions of few of those major macronutrients now when we talk about the micronutrients so micronutrients they are required in small quantities as well as they help in enzyme function and maintenance of protein structure examples of micronutrients are manganese zinc nickel cobalt etc normally these micronutrients they participates or they are part of enzyme and cofactors they help in the catalysis of the reactions and maintenance of protein structure so this is actually what is nutrition about the nutri nutrients about the major uh, about the macronutrients as well as the micronutrients all organisms actually they need carbon hydrogen oxygen and the sources of electrons why right? because carbon is basically required as the backbone for all the organic molecules from which the organisms are made of hydrogen and oxygen are also found in organic molecules and an important element where is the need for the electrons the need of the electron is to provide energy is to provide energy and use in cellular electrons these movement of electrons during the electron transport chain as well as an oxidation reduction reactions they actually provide this energy and use in cellular work electrons also reduce molecules during the biosynthesis now when we talk about the energy about the carbon about the electrons so there is actually a diversity of microorganisms there is a diversity in microorganisms uh, of taking all these sources as the nutrition for them for their growth so basically there are certain sources of energy electron and carbon on which these microorganisms depends for their growth so if we categorize these the and the, the energy sources some rely on the energy sources some organisms rely on the energy sources and they are known as the phototrophs and chemotrophs phototrophs are those microorganisms which depend upon light chemotrophs can be defined those which rely on the oxidation of organic or inorganic compounds these are known as the chemotrophs now the more microorganisms depending on electron sources these are known as the lithotrophs organotrophs lithotrophs rely for their nutrition on the reduced inorganic molecules whereas organotrophs they get it from the organic molecules those microorganisms or those organisms which depend upon the carbon sources these are known as the phototrophs and heterotrophs basically they require carbon dioxide as the sole or principal biosynthetic carbon source heterotrophs they depend on the reduced performed or organic 
molecules from other organisms. So now if we classify the nutritional types of microorganisms, here we can see the nutritional type, the carbon sources they are utilizing, the energy source required, whereas the electron source. And these are the, in the last here we can see the representative microorganisms, examples of the microorganisms which are actually performing or which are the photolithotroph or whatever the classification has been performed for them. So nutritional type for when we talk about the photolithotrophy, the carbon source they are using is carbon dioxide from the light and electron source is inorganic ethanol. The examples are purple and green sulfur, bacteria and cyanobacteria. The other category is the photo, photo organotrophic heterotrophy. They are utilizing the organic carbon, but carbon dioxide may also be used. Energy source they are using is light and they are getting their electron from the organic compounds which are donating the electrons. The examples are the purple non-sulfur bacteria, green non-sulfur bacteria. Then the next is chemolithoautotrophy. It is also known as the chemolithotrophic autotrophy. The carbon source is carbon dioxide. Inorganic chemicals is the energy source and inorganic e donors they are using inorganic compounds, inorganic chemical compounds using as the electron donors. Examples are the sulfur oxidizing bacteria, hydrogen oxidizing bacteria, methanogens, nitrifying bacteria, iron oxidizing bacteria. Then chemolithoheterotrophy or mixotrophy it is also known as the chemolithotrophic heterotrophy. The carbon source that depend are organic carbon but again they can use some CO2. Inorganic chemicals as the energy source and inorganic chemical compounds as the electron donor. Examples are some sulfur oxidizing bacteria for example Bigiota. Then the last is chemoorganoheterotrophy and also known as chemoorganotrophic heterotrophy. They are utilizing or they are requiring carbon source from the organic carbon compounds. The energy source they are using are organic chemicals, often same as carbon sources. And they are getting their electron donor from the organic compounds, same as carbon source. And examples are the most non-photosynthetic microbes including pathogens, fungi, many protists and many arch. So this table actually classifies the nutritional type of microorganisms, the dependent of the microorganisms or the carbon source, energy source, electron source with few examples. Now we will talk about the uptake of nutrients. After the, the requirement of the nutrients, how does this uptake of nutrients inside the cell takes place? So basically, there are several transport mechanisms that work for the uptake of nutrients across the cell membrane to perform these cell activities. And there are four types of cellular mechanisms which we are going to discuss. First one is the passive or simple diffusion. Passive or simple diffusion does not involve any energy. So it is the process where molecules move from a higher concentration to the lower concentration and the rate of diffusion is dependent on the size of the concentration gradient between cells interior and exterior. It allows the passage for small molecules like 
small molecules like oxygen, water and carbon dioxide can simply diffuse across the membrane. Second type of transport mechanism is active transport. It is the transport of solute molecules to higher concentrations means from lower to higher concentration against a concentration gradient and here metabolic energy is used and apart from the metabolic energy carrier proteins are also going to be used in this active transport. So here in this diagram we can see that there is a comparison between the passive transport and the active transport. So in the passive transport basically it is the simple diffusion or the facilitated transport. This is facilitated trans diffusion is also a kind of the passive transport but in both these in both the simple diffusion or the passive diffusion energy is not required whereas you can see in the active transport from the figure that for movement of the solute molecules into the cell membrane requires some energy so atp here we can see atp is required for the molecules to pass the cell membrane the other type of transport mechanism is group translocation so group translocation is also a type of active transport and the same metabolic energy is required to move the molecules across the membrane but here these molecules they are chemically modified where is an active transport the molecules move the solute molecules moves across a membrane but without any modification there is an example, there is an example showing this uh, group trans translocation in the phosphotransferase system which uses the energy from the molecule of phosphoenol pyruvate. So phosphoenol pyruvate is transferring energy for the movement of the sugars into the cell. Therefore, a phosphate is transferred from the phosphoenol pyruvate to the incoming sugar during the process of this group trans translocation. Here we can see that a glucose molecule, here is an enzyme and this is glucose 6-phosphate. So, a high energy phosphate molecules that is transferring the, here we can see it is entering through this protein and here we can see it is entering into the cell. Then how does the iron uptake inside the cell takes place? Actually the microorganisms they require this iron basically for the use in cytochromes and many enzymes and this uptake becomes difficult due to extreme insolubility due to extreme insolubility of ferric iron which leaves a small amount of free iron available for transport so iron uptake is difficult because iron means basically ferric iron it is insoluble and only a small amount of free iron is available for transport so now what happens bacteria many bacteria they secrete these siderophores which is a low molecular weight organic molecules they actually they are able to bind this ferric iron with high affinity and form a chelate the microorganisms they secrete siderophores when iron is scarce in medium and once the iron siderophore complex reach the cell surface it binds to the siderophore receptor protein so there are certain siderophore receptor proteins present on the cell wall so they bind to the cell surface 
this iron cetyl 4 complex so then the iron is either is released to enter the cell directly or the iron cetyl 4 complex is transported inside by an abc transporter abc transporter is actually playing a role in the active transport it is part of the active transport now after the uptake of the nutrients basically we will talk about certain growth factors organic compounds are essential cell components they actually cannot be synthesized by the organisms therefore they are known as the growth factors certain major classes of growth factors are amino acids purines and pyrimidines vitamins amino acids are needed for protein synthesis we all know that amino acids are the building blocks of the proteins purines and pyrimidines basically for the nucleic acid synthesis they are required vitamins they are small organic molecules that make up all the part of the enzyme cofactors and are needed in very small amounts to sustain growth although they are required in small amounts but they are very important part of the organic they are, they are important organic molecules because they are part of the enzyme and cofactors because cofactors are importantly required to increase the rate of the reaction now we will talk something about the culture media so culture media are basically classified on the basis of the chemical and physical types of the culture media we can categorize it in the synthetic media and the complex media synthetic media also known as defined medium in which all chemical components are known in which all the chemical components are known whereas complex media media that contains some ingredients of unknown chemical composition such a single complex media can meet the requirement of many different micro organisms and on the basis of the physical nature chemical composition so physical nature it may be liquid it may be semi solid or solid so basically agar if we talk about the agar so for any solid medium agar is present and for its solid nature about 2 to 2.5 percent agar is present whereas in, so, in, in, in semi solid it's 0.5 uh, 0.2 to 0.5 percent of the agar is present in, in liquid no agar chemical composition it is uh, defined for the complex so basically the functional type we could say that it is supportive enriched selective and differential media supportive media it is basically used for gen in, in general purpose for the growth of the microorganisms enriched means it is containing a lot of the nitrogen sources like peptone yeast extract beef extract so that it can support different type of microorganism selective media is used when a uh, individual my growth of microorganisms is in interest basically and differential for the differentiation of the different kind of microorganisms now talking about the after talking about the culture media basically uh, when microorganisms are to be isolated from any source like basically in um, microbiology labs for the isolation of microorganisms we generally use 
water soil milk and even from air these basically are the sources from which microorganisms can be isolated so once the source has been taken the microorganisms are cultured the microorganisms are cultured but when we grow these microorganisms on a plate or on in a flask we see that there are lots of microorganisms which are not purified which are not pure the culture is not pure so in order to isolate these into the pure culture there are two methods one is the spread plate method now the steps involved in the preparation of spread plate first of all pipette a small sample onto the center of an agar medium plate first of all we will take an agar plate and we will pipe it a uh, very less amount of the sample on the center now we will take a glass spreader and we will dip that glass spreader into the ethanol to get us to get it disinfected now we will flame this ethanol soaked spreader and we will allow it to cool after cooling after cooling and how we will determine that this spreader is cool we will slightly touch the spreader onto the surface of the agar on the plate which we are going to culture now spread the sample evenly over the agar surface with a sterilized spreader and then incubate so these are the steps here what we are doing here we are in the first step we are pipetting some sample here we are just uh, dipping the glass spreader into the ethanol we are flaming the spreader and in the fourth we are just culturing on the spread with this spreader so after the incubation we can see that a pure culture is formed we get a pure culture by this spread plate technique the another method is the streak plate technique so there are certain stop steps which are involved in the in the this streak plate technique now first of all what we do we just take the culture from a loop into this plate on one corner and then we just uh, we just uh, dip that loop into the ethanol and just flame it then we take we streak this culture after streaking at this point we will again flame this loop put it into the ethanol and from the same point from here we are going to streak this way the same method is followed we are going to take culture from here then we are going to streak it in this plate so similarly we will complete on this side in the first step so after the incubation of the plate we can see that these kind of colonies this was the step one where initially um the microbial culture was taken from the source uh on to this side from the loop then it was street this way then this way then this way then we so this is also a, a technique uh, or a method where cultures can be purified because we are actually diluting the cultures at every step so this is the streaked plates which is obtained after the incubation by following the process of the streak plate technique now we will talk about the serial dilution so serial dilution is also another means basically when we have to purify the culture we can serially dilute it here we can see that the serial dilution is taking place in which the original original sample is diluted several times to thin out the population sufficiently the most diluted samples are then mixed with warm agar and poured into petri dishes isolated cells they grow into colonies can be used to establish pure cultures the surface colonies are circular so colonies are lenticular and shaped so here we can see that here we are taking a culture 1 ml of the culture from the source we are taking 1 ml and 9 ml of the 
uh, water or saline or any media is there and serially we are diluting it and it is becoming to 10 to the power of minus this is 10 10 to the power of minus 1 2 3 10 to the power of minus 4 so this we can see that mix and warm a carbon this is 1 ml and here it is 1 ml so as soon as it is, it is getting serious, serially diluted the number of colonies are decreased so the original sample is diluted several times to thin out the population the most diluted samples are then mixed with warm agar and poured into petri dishes. So isolated cells go into colonies. So this is basically serial dilution. And this source has been taken from a book of Prescott. So uh, with this, I think uh, we cover with the microbial uh, nutrition, sorry, uh, microbial nutrition. And that's all.